All right, we can get started. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, Brayden Hope is on the line, ready for your questions. Uh, again, please use the, uh, the chat option below uh, to request to ask questions. I just ask that you please uh, state your name and affiliation before asking a question. And we can uh, start with, um, with Sam. Sam, please go ahead. Hi, Brayden. Um, I just wanted to ask you kind of why you're compelled to make a statement uh, there on Wednesday. I know you and your wife have been very outspoken um, in the past about kind of these social issues, but obviously both Brandy and you kind of released some messages. I just want to hear from you. I uh, think you know that I'm not very active in the social media scene or anything. I, um, but I've been you know, just following along uh, the news and such and what's been going on in the, in the country and um, something that I've been passionate about for a while, just trying to educate myself and, and learn as much as I can to, um, to not be uh, so naive, especially as a kid growing up in a small town in Canada where, um, you know, the situations that are, are showing themselves um, today, I, I never dealt with. So I, I wanted to educate myself and then um, just seeing it, it just it was, every day I was kind of getting more and more kind of depressed and, 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 you know, upset and angry. And I knew Brandy was um, trying to do her part, but I, I felt like uh, I just needed to, to say something to make sure, you know, if it helps someone out somewhere, um, I just felt like I needed to in order to um, do my part. And uh, it's not, it's just one thing. Um, it's one of those things that we've tried to pride ourselves on is that we, it's not, you know, the flavor of the week type thing. It's, it's something we live our lives around um, and just trying to do our part. Insults, uh, JJ. JJ Regan, NBC Sports Washington. Thanks, Braden, for uh, doing this today. Um, you've always been outspoken in your beliefs on social issues, even though in hockey it seems like there's a culture against speaking out on these things in order to not be a distraction to your team. Why have you always been willing to speak out when so many in hockey are not? And what would your message be to a player who maybe wants to speak out but is afraid of being seen as a distraction? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why that is. Um, because as a as a hockey player, I'm the first to stand up for the, the type of people that I believe um, the majority are in, in our game. Um, but I, I don't know why it's uh, been kind of taboo to um, speak your mind or, or uh, you know, stand up for, for what you believe in. I think um, obviously there's always this divide in, in, you know, from sports to social issues. Um, you know, you want to be educated. You want to make sure that you're, um, you know what you're talking about. You're not just using your platform to, to try and, um, you know, be popular or, or something like that. Um, so I don't know why, um, why it's like that in, in hockey. I think it's changing. I think it's getting better. I think, um, the more we follow, uh, the true leaders, I think if you, you look at, uh, what Johnny Taves did, um, people follow guys like that. And, and I think, um, you know, we're obviously behind as, as a, as a sport. Um, I think in, in, uh, everyone's realizing that and the, the true um, personalities are, are going to show through, I think, um, as long as we keep pushing it. Rob Carlin. Rob hey. Carlin. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Hey, Braden. Um, eventually, I guess we will talk about hockey, but another follow-up to that is seeing more people. John Carlson also um, you know, spoke up and, and tweeted something or put it on Instagram. Um, how important is it, though, that players realize that there is a platform? And I like what you said about taking the time to educate yourself first before speaking out. But the players do use this platform for good and that you do do something more for your community than just win hockey games to bring people together. Yeah, and I, I believe that um... – you know, to kind of expand on the educating yourself. I think, 
that goes along with just, you know, bettering yourself, bettering, um, people around you, um, you know, growing as a, as a human, that's the way you're going to grow as a, as a group, uh, and as a sport. Um, and I think as long as, you know, we realize we do have a platform, um, our responsibility now is to, um, make sure we're getting the message across that we, we believe in, we want, um, our children to grow up in. We want, uh, um, you know, the world needs change. And, and obviously we're just hockey players. Um, a lot of us have uh, um, skipped education in a lot of ways to become hockey players. Um, so we're all kind of behind the eight ball already in that way. So, um, but in today's um, world, how much is out there? Um, how much you can learn. Uh, I think if our, uh, we really focus in on the right areas, um, listen, um, because they're, you know, you can never know what it's truly like to be a different person. Um, but you can learn and, and try and preach the right message. Um, I mean, it's, it, who knows what the, the right thing is, as long as I believe if you're educating, growing, um, and most importantly, teaching the, the, the youth, the, the right way to treat people. Um, that's where change come for, comes from. Chip Breer. Hey, Braden, Chip Breer from ABC7 Sports here in D.C. Thanks so much for taking time to talk with us. I had a chance to talk with Natasha Cloud, the Washington Mystics, who's been very outspoken as well. And I'm just wondering if the network of athletes here in D.C. is become tight in, if there's been communication, like you said, educating yourself and – you know, talking with those people and learning about things in which you can do to help uh, take their side or just help with the uh, injustices that are going on in the world. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm a kind of isolated individual at, at times. So um, I, I, I hope so. I hope um, you know, that's happening in different ways. I, myself, uh, I like to educate just through, you know, um, through books, through um, you know, there's documentaries, through firsthand interacting with different people. Um, but I, I don't know. I, like I said before, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a real big believer in social media, so I don't have a lot of the connections with with a lot of the uh, different athletes around um, DC. But I, I'm um, from what I've heard, what Brandy has told me, what I've seen, um, it, you know a lot of athletes in DC are stepping up and that's, uh, it makes you proud to be, be part of, uh, of this region. And, um, hopefully there's even more. Go to Thank you. Next. Teresa Walker with the Associated Press. Brayden, you're speaking up now. The, my question now is, uh, do you have any specific steps on what you'd like to try to follow up, uh, your words with? Yeah, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, Brandy and I've, have been, talking about for for a while um you know the the biggest thing in my process when i do this is i don't i don't believe in a uh, one-stop type, type of thing I, I believe in supporting causes that um are going to do or uh, organizations that are going to do good for a long time um brandy and i've, and I've kind of uh, focused more on uh the human rights campaign in the past because it, it hit a a, a wide spectrum for us um, dealing with uh, LGBTQ uh, issues and racial issues, the main two things. But um, as we learn more, as, as we see the world changing in front of us, um, you know, we're looking into trying to find different options uh, as well as, as sticking with that um, to just really make sure that we're um, finding ways to do all we can um, you know, and try to do our part as much as, as much as we can. Um, but as far as specifics, uh, we're, we're not trying to make any quick uh, decisions. We want to lay out a game plan, um, for an extended period of time where, where, you know, we believe we can help change. I'll go to Tom Galetti next. Tom, please go ahead. Hey, Braden. Um, you mentioned earlier educating, uh, youth, uh, what kind of message have you and Brandy been trying to maybe give to your, your children in the last couple of weeks when they've seen everything that's been going on and maybe to try to help them understand? 
Yeah, it's it's one of those uh, conversations we have a lot with with different parents too. Um, so our kids are, are you know just turned eight and six, so they're kind of at an age where they can start processing it, but really don't um, you know quite understand the fullest. And um, you don't want to paint a picture where the world's an awful place, um, but you also want to paint a realistic picture where um, they understand what some people go through um, that we don't. Um, so it's and making sure I think the approach we take is we we're honest uh, uh, to our kids. We're, um, if they ask questions, we don't try and sugarcoat it. We try and, um, explain it as best we can. Um, yeah, so that they, they grow up with that knowledge, um, to do something with, I think, um, myself, my, my parents tried the best they could that way. Um, I, I think, uh, they're ahead of the curve in a lot of ways, but we're a small from small town in Saskatchewan where um, it wasn't until I moved here that you really understand what what racial injustice is in this country. In Canada, we have um, indigenous rights and, and uh, racism that way. Um, and I grew up around that, but uh, this is a different. Um, so I needed to educate myself and still need to um, and it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I believe how my parents did the right thing, um, in teaching us, um, in our situation. And I think I learned a lot from them and Brandy as well. And now we're just trying to take our, our knowledge that we've learned in, in a different culture and try and teach our kids that way. Thank you. Uh, Mike Vogel. Mike Vogel, WashingtonCaps.com. Uh, Braden, thanks for doing this. Um, in the course of one of your earlier answers, you, uh, use the phrase, we're just hockey players. And, you know, going through the morass of social media, you can see that there are, there's a faction of people out there that would, would like you to just be a hockey player, not hear your voice on anything outside of uh, the game. Um, what's your response to, to those people who would say, you know, I don't want to hear from, from my athletes. I just want to be entertained by them. Or, or the people who say, he's Canadian. What's he doing talking about what's going on in my country? Yeah, those are two you, you hear a lot. Um, you know, the one when you talk about just hockey players, I think uh, um, we all have our professions. Uh, everyone does. Uh, I don't. I don't know if any of us have. Uh, you know, unless you're uh, right. Uh, your your job is to fight um, racial inequalities or or any sort of social. Um, issues that way we're all just trying to be humans um, and we just happen to have a following based on our job um, where people see us and, and easier to see us so I think it's just a, it's crazy to think that that's an argument um, you know we play hockey on the ice we live our lives just as humans off of off of the ice and, and try to do our part that way um, and like the, the, your second part, Vogue's, uh, about the Canadian thing is, uh, you know, I've lived here for, for over 10 years now. Um, so I believe I've, uh, I, we call this home. This is my kid's home. My kids are both American. Um, so it's, uh, I feel like I'm fortunate to have been in both countries and be a part of both countries. And, and I've said this, uh, along, you know, Canada follows America in a lot of ways. Um, you know, if you go from Canada to America, you don't see a ton of difference. Um, you know, the northern part of the states are very similar to northern or to Canada. And um, I believe when you try to make changes in one, they change in the other. Um, so I, I realized that I, I, being Canadian, I obviously went to school in Canada, um, did all my schooling on Canadian history and stuff. Uh, so. American history is one of those um, things that I don't have much schooling on, but I have a huge passion for. I think it's extremely interesting in, in so many different ways. And I just try and um, I enjoy learning about it and seeing what is good and what is bad and what should change, what the future should, should look like in my mind. And I think that's all I'm, I'm trying to preach. Thank you. Uh, Tarek? 
Hi, Braden. Um, it, a lot of athletes in the past week have, have kind of lent their voices to, um, you know, social injustice, racial injustice. Your statement was incredibly direct and strong. Um, why was that important? And uh, secondly, was there a moment coming from a small town, you said when you got here in D.C., that where you saw it, where you saw racial injustice, or, you know, maybe you had a conversation with a teammate um, and that kind of turned a light bulb on a little bit? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, as, as far as, you know, the message that I wanted to send, um, a lot of the reason that I don't, I don't go on social media too often as I, I think it's flooded with people saying things before thinking, um, before truly, uh, believing in the words they said. And, um, I've been thinking about what to say for, you know, over a week and trying for it to resonate, um, to the black community of what I believe the white community should take responsibility for. Um, and I didn't, I don't think, uh, this time is a time to sugarcoat anything. I think it's, um, a time to look at ourselves in the mirror and, and really find how we can be better and how we can take responsibility for the past, um, and learn from that to move forward. Um, and as far as moving to, uh, this area from Canada, I think, you know, the biggest thing for me is with the caps, we get to do a lot of, um, you know, work in the community and seeing some of the areas, um, you know, in, in the city that I'd never seen before and seeing how behind the eight ball, um, so many people are to start with, I think that's, that's hit me since I first got here. And it's one of those things that I'm just trying to learn how I can do my part, my family's part to, um, help people out and, and, um, you know, I'm really hoping, I, I really believe that, that this is going to change the world in a lot of ways. Thank you. We'll go to Mike Trikos next. Mike, please go ahead. Yeah, Michael Trikos, uh, Post Media News in Toronto. Uh, sorry to kind of shift the change to uh, hockey, um, but Phase 2 is opening up on Monday um, with rinks opening up. I wonder, it's been three months now uh, since you've been on the ice, uh, based any kind of NHL shots. What's going to be the biggest challenge for you as a goalie? And how tough is it going to be to kind of get back up to speed when uh, games are eventually held? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's actually funny. It goes back to, a. I think, the, the only other the Zoom call I did here was when I got asked if I was doing anything about uh, with goaltending and I said I wasn't doing anything I think that got taken as I was just sitting on <laughs> my couch doing nothing which uh, isn't the case but uh, like I in the summer I don't I get off the ice um, so it's I'm kind of used to it um, that way I think the biggest challenge is going to be the you know the limited amount that you're able to stay at the rink or or coaching and, and that kind of thing. Um, that's going to be something we're going to have to play by ear. Um, and to be honest, I'm just kind of rolling with punches right now. Whenever they tell me I can go on the ice, I'll um, do the best to be um, as you know safe and, and everything to get back on and, and um, go from there. Ryan Kennedy. Hi, Braden. Ryan Kennedy from the Hockey News. Uh, just Shifting back for a second, uh, a lot of NHL teams, in including the Capitals, have had law enforcement nights. Uh, you guys had one this year against the Jets. Uh, given everything that's happening right now, would you still be comfortable uh, playing in such a game in the in the future? Um, you know, that's, I think, a question that goes into a lot of the uh, confusion in, in, in my head. Um, Personally, uh, I think it, there's so many layers to that question that you see what's happening now and it's just, it, it doesn't seem real. Um, but at the same time, some of the best people I've ever met in my life are, are law enforcement officers. Um, the most caring and, and most, uh, um, they believe in the right values more than you know, people I've ever met. But to see some of the brutality that's going on it 
it really tears you of how, um, you know, how, you know, maybe I, I don't know what actually is happening sometimes. So, um, that, that's tough. I, 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 you know, my friends that are in law enforcement, um, I'll stand by them because I know they believe in what's right. And I think that's one of the ways that's going to change is, is to have leaders like those people I know, um, so that there is never a, a, a bad police officer. Um, again, you need to have leaders in that enforcement. And um, to say it on a night like that, as, as long as we are um, praising those people that are standing up for the rights, uh, especially in today, in today with, with uh, black rights, um, those are the people that we need to get behind in order for change. So um, as long as it's done the right way, I would. Thank you. Barry Sarwuga. Barry, please go ahead. Braden Barry at the Washington Post. Um, I'm wondering if you have watched the demonstrations in, you know, kind of your adopted home of, of DC and, and what viscerally your reactions to what's gone on in the streets, both with the protesters and with um, the law enforcement response to them. Yeah, I mean, um, I've tried to watch as, as much as I can. Um, but, you know, unless you're there, I, I don't really know, um, know what it's like to be, to be out there. So in, in order to comment on that, um, I know there's definitely some things that I think are extremely um, morally, um, humanely wrong. Um, that I would never support, um, but you know, I I do hope that there's a vast majority that is peaceful protest that is being um, heard, and I, I hope that's the case. Uh, I have no idea if there is. That's uh, um, so I, I don't know. I don't pretend to be a an expert on on any of that. Um, I know there's stuff that I don't believe in that's going on right now, and I hope it changes. Thank you. Uh, Sab Obermeyer, Sam, please go ahead. Sam, please go ahead. Sam Obermeyer, Sirius XM. Thanks for your time today, Braden. Um, just looking more big picture these last three months, what's it been like for you dealing with the pandemic? And the, have, have you learned anything about yourself with this kind of downtime? Yeah, it's been, uh, been strange. I mean, it's uh, been, what, 80 some days now since we we shut down. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's been great in a lot of ways um, and not great in a lot of ways. Uh, I've got to spend you know more time with my family than I ever thought I'd be able to, um, which has been absolutely awesome. Um, but at the same time, you go a little nuts uh, without having a, a, uh, a goal every single day of what to accomplish. But we're trying to find different ways, trying to, you know, be in our backyard in the outdoors a little bit as much as we can. Um, you know, every day you can find something to, to enjoy and, and better yourself with, even if, um, you can't do the things that, you know, we were able to, to do three months ago. Okay. We have time for two more questions. So we'll go back to Rob Carlin. Rob, please go ahead. Yeah. Braden, Rob Carlin again from NBC Sports Washington. Um, the follow-up to how you're preparing and how you will be prepared is, you know, especially for you, a guy who likes the the rhythm, the action, the shots, how do you get yourself, I, I feel like it would be easier for the skaters than for a goalie to get back into that headspace and that rhythm of seeing the puck. How much of a concern is that? And is there anything you can do to be prepared for it? Or you just deal with this as, as we all have to? Uh, well, one of the things that I'm happy that the NHL and NHLPA put in was um, we're, we're able to use our goalie coach um, after a certain amount of days. So um, that's an advantage that we have over the, the skaters, I guess. Um, uh, so I, I'm not too concerned uh, that way because I know with, uh, um, once, you know, Scotty's on the ice, we, we can get a lot accomplished in a, in a little amount of time. Um, I find it harder in, in the a normal year when you don't have that, structure of a of a goalie coach there when you're just kind of going through the 
other drills that, you know, um, skills coach coaches put on. So, um, you know, that the fact that, that Scotty will be there, um, before the camp starts and everything, I, I feel confident that we'll be able to, to get right back to where we were. Okay. Last question goes to Tom Galetti with NHL.com. Tom, please go ahead. Hey, Brain, just uh, was wondering how much during this time you've had to think about your future and we don't know when, when the season will be over, but you would be a free agent possibly. Um, and has your approach maybe going to change if free agency could end up happening in October as far as you, you know, what you would do there could involve moving your family, things like that. If you get to that, get that far. Uh, to be honest, I have, I have no clue. I haven't, uh, thought of it past the fact of when it might be, um, you know, there's so much up in the air right now, even if, uh, you know, free agency is later on October, November, whenever, um, you know, our first thought was, you know, what do we do with kids, uh, in school or anything like that, um, with so much uncertainty, but who knows if schools will even be running by then. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I've, I'm focused on trying to get back on the ice here and, and trying to win with the Capitals right now. Um, try to do everything I, know I can uh, in this time, once we get back playing that, uh, to win a championship. Okay. Brain, thank you for doing this important media goal today. Uh, to our media members, thank you for joining us. Uh, please continue to be safe and well, and hopefully, hopefully we'll see you soon. Uh, take care, everyone.